All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <clears throat> the what. First, two things you need to learn about trading. All right, two things. How markets move. How do markets move? They move in trend. They move in cycles. And they move in patterns. Two types of patterns I want to talk about. One is a bullish pattern. This is a predefined price movement that often results in a move higher in price. It's bullish. Then there's a bearish pattern, which is a predefined price movement, often resulting in a move lower. That's why it's a bearish pattern. Note, <clears throat> these patterns do not guarantee a movement in a certain direction, but it does offer a higher probability of it. So we're going to be looking at bullish patterns <clears throat> and bearish patterns, all right? Examples of those. Now, there's a lot of them out there. <clears throat> we're only going to look at a couple. And your job is going to be to go and explore others that exist so that we can train your eyes and your mind, just like learning another language. Por ahora, mi, mi, mi amigos quien habla español, right? At first, when you're looking at Spanish words, you're like, uh, yo no comprehendo, all right? And then as you study, you're like, oh, I know what that means. <clears throat> same with markets, same with patterns. That's what we're going to learn. So two examples. The first one is a bullish flag. Bullish flag, you say, that seems weird. Don't worry, it'll make sense in a second. A bullish flag pattern is when a stock is in a strong uptrend and looks like a flag with two, count them, two key parts. What happens in a flag pattern? You need a flag pole and you need a flag. Flag pole and a flag. This pattern is a bullish continuation pattern. Why do I say continuation? Because it oftentimes happens in a trend that is going higher. And you can recognize that pattern. You can say, aha, I think I know where this one's going. All right, that's when we recognize a bullish flag for a bullish, which is a bullish pattern. Now, here's an example of what that looks like. ICFI, <clears throat> it's going up, up, up. Here's the flag pole. And then look at that flag. The thing takes off and then it rests. Here's what you understand about these movements in stocks. Stocks, tickers, these patterns, it's like a sprinter. It can only run so far, so long, so fast before it has to do what? Take a break. So this right here is the sprint, right? Running, ta 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 Running fast, running hard. And this is the rest, right? So the sprint and the rest. That are these two things. And that forms a bullish flag, a bullish flag. Right here's the pole, here's the flag. We can see this now. Now your eyes are trained to see this in a chart. Second <clears throat> is a cup and handle. Now there's a lot of bullish patterns out there. I'm just covering two tonight just to whet your appetite to help you understand these things exist in the real world. A cup and handle is a cup and handle, handle resembles a cup formed by a basing pattern that typically looks like a U followed by a smaller U next to the cup formed by a short-term pullback. So what does this look like? What does this look like? Well, here's this cup, right? This pattern, right? It goes down and then up. And notice we talked about this last time. What is this? Hits it once, hits it twice, hits it a third time. What's this? Resistance, my friends, that is resistance, a resistance level. And then it goes lower to form this. Think about this cup, a little steam coming off the top, right, right? And then here's the breakout, boom, going higher, <clears throat> going higher. That is the cup and handle formation, right? Base, handle, breakout. That's what that looks like. <clears throat> now, those are bullish patterns. Now, what are bearish patterns? Friends, the inverse. What is a bearish flag, a bear flag? It's the inverse of a bull flag. It looks the same, just upside down. All right? It is a, what is a, what is a bearish pattern for a cup and handle? An inverse cup and handle. Same pattern, just upside down. 
all right? And you're like, well, what does that look like? I will show you in just a moment, all right? We will get there. Again, think about what I just taught you. Bull flag, cup and handle. You wanna look for a bearish sig signal, bearish pattern? Same thing, upside down, in reverse, all right? So let's look up these examples with real life examples here in the market. Here, right, is what we got. Let me uh, break it out for us. Okay, now, look at this. This is CVS. Let's highlight, highlight it on CVS, okay? Here we go. What handle pattern, what, what pattern is hit this in CVS? And this happened over, look, months from, uh, from January into April. What is this one? Let's draw it out. Look at this, cup, right? And handle. Don't forget that resistance line. A little steam coming off. And up, oh, one more handle just for good measure. Boom, break, higher. Cup and handle. And you ask yourself, self, what would this look like if it was an inverse cup and handle? Well, friends, let me show you. All you gotta do if you wanna look at the opposite of any chart, put a negative next to it. Boom, upside down. Look at this. Here is the cup and handle. Inverse cup and handle, right? Boom, boom, breakout, bang. Drop, mm, drop. Ooh, I wouldn't wanna be in that one long. All right, that's the inverse, okay. Now, what does it look like if we had the same thing in, right, for a bullish flag? Well, let's look at upstart. Let's look at upstart. Bullish flag, let me clear all this out. All right, here we go. Here is our bullish flag. Let's just go right here. Two examples, in fact. Bullish flag, what do we got? We got our flagpole right here, goes up. We got our flag right here. And what do we got? Breakout. Bang. To what? To another flag. Right here. What do we got? <clears throat> Breakout. Bang. And <clears throat> you might say to yourself, look, we're setting up with another bullish flag here, right? Nope, breakdown. And where is it finding support at? We learned this last time. Where is it finding support? The 21 EMA, because price always reverts to the mean, ladies and gentlemen. You see how we're building knowledge here? We're stacking information class to class. So this could have helped you get in on this. Oh, look, I see that bullish flag. Bang, taken off. Do I wanna sell it? I don't know. It's staying on the eight EMA, which means it is having momentum, momentum, momentum. All right, bang, higher, bang, higher. Ah, broke it, 21 support. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Okay, so those are two real life examples of trades, of setups, bull flag, bear flag. And again, when you look at this, same thing in Reverse, upstart, negative, right here, boom. What do you got? Downward, right? Not pretty, not pretty. Where do you go? You got your bear flag post, right? You got your bear flag right here. And what do you got? Further breakdown. All right, do you see what I'm doing here? Inverse, it's the same thing, upside down, bull flag, bear flag. Cup and handle, inverse cup and handle. All right, let's move on, because we got lots to cover. We haven't even got to the meat yet, friends. You think it's the meat? This ain't the meat. We got some thick meat coming up. This is just the bread, this is just the top slice. We're getting there, we're getting there, my friends. Keep in mind, these things do oftentimes happen as a part of a trend going up. All right, as part of a trend. Notice, notice, what is this? Here's the flagpole. Here's the flag. Breakout, bang. All right, breakout, higher. Keep in mind, 
This is what these things are a part of, larger trends. This is important. All that you're gonna learn, right? This is walking right here. Think about seven to nine months of a kid. They're like wobbly, trying to stand up. Once you can walk, the world opens up for you. Once you know how to create a trading plan, friend, let me tell you, you will be empowered to go at the markets, all right? And that's what we're gonna talk about. The how on how to trade, how to create a trading plan. There is a little bit more to it, but just like Michael Park said before I got on, and that man is a genius. He's a wonderful human being. You should be on here every Wednesday learning from Michael Park and Dennis Moffat. And as he said, simplicity is very, very important. So we're gonna make the most simple trading plan possible. First question in your trading plan, what's the setup you're using? Last week, we talked about simply using support and resistance. Or you could use a moving average crossover. Or you could use support off the 21 EMA and a trend. All right? All of these are viable setups. Jeff Bishop, the myth, the man, the legend, right? Our alpha here, Raging Bull, he uses the 1330 crossover, moving averages on the hourly chart. That's his setup. He keeps it simple. That's what he loves. But if you're going to make a plan, you need to start with the setup. So that's the first question you ask in your plan. What's the setup I'm using here? Why do I need a setup? Because it's the basis of your plan. Everything starts there. What is yours? Try a lot, right? Like I said, a trade is like a jump, like a hook shot, jump shot, layup, right? Three pointer, step back right? Euro step. There's so many different things I can do in basketball, but I'm going to try one first. All right. I'm going to try one first. Now, once you have your setup, the question in that setup is where's the buy zone? We're going to talk about this. Where's the best buy zone? Should I just buy this anywhere? No. The answer to that is no. You need to be patient. Like we talked about last week and identify the buy zone, the place where it is most appropriate for you to put the trade on, not just anywhere. Thirdly, what is your profit target? Once you buy, where are you looking to sell? Remember last week I talked about this is not blackjack. It's not like you just put down chips, cards get dealt, you win or you lose. You decide when you're out and you must decide because when money's on the line, your brain short circuits. Where's your profit target? Where will you sell for profit? And finally, where will you stop out, right? If it does not work, where are you gonna say, that's it, I'm done? Because when you know where you're gonna stop out, that is you saying, this is my risk. I'm willing to risk X on this trade. And that's how you do it with your plan, my friend. You define your risk. I am willing to risk X to see if this works. Just like you putting down a chip on the table for blackjack and saying, I'm willing to risk this chip to see if I can win this hand against the dealer. All right, you need to define your risk. You do that by knowing where you're gonna stop out and doing the math. So if I can say I'm willing to risk this in hopes of gaining this by buying it here using this setup, that is your plan. That's the plan. Let's get into it. All right, let's use an example. Let's use a bull flag on a Apple as an example. So you search for this pattern using a scanner tool in your platform. You might be saying to yourself, Sturge, there's 10,000 tickers out there. How do I find a bull flag? Do I just sit, tit, 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 just look through all these charts out there? No, friend, no, no. We use a scanner, all right? Now, we're gonna get into that next time, but you gotta do the work first. That's like teaching my third grader to do arithmetic. He's like, Dad, I just wanna use a calculator. You need to learn first. You need to learn first so you can recognize it, okay? So you search for this pattern using a scanner tool in your platform or at a website. Again, we'll talk about this more next session. And then you determine the buy zone for your setup. So again, if we're using Apple bull flag, 
This is the spot where you wanna buy that you have determined offers you the best risk and reward. This could be multiple spots, right? This is called scaling in and scaling out. You might buy a little bit here and it pulls back, it's even better spot and still valid. Buy a little bit here, buy a little bit here and build your position that way, all right? So you want to determine the profit target. Don't worry, we're going to get there. And again, with the example with the bull flag for Apple, this is the spot where you've decided you want to sell for profit. Again, this could be multiple spots. Sell a little bit here, sell a little bit here, sell a little bit here. All right, that's called scaling out. Finally, you want to determine your stop loss level. Again, the example will be with a bull flag. We're going to get to this in a second. It's all going to make sense when I show you the visual. The spot where you've decided the setup is no longer valid. The reason you took the trade no longer exists. So for example, if you're trying to trade a bull flag to the upside and it breaks the flag, is the trade still valid? It is not. So you get out. You can always get back in, right? Re-entry is just a commission away. So you can always get back in. If the trade's no longer valid, you will exit the trade for a loss, and that's okay. People lose, right? You're not going to win them all. You got to get used to that. This level will help you define your risk before entering the trade, which is why when we say this is your buy zone, if your stop level is here, that's the risk. And if it's only like a buck, cool, buy more, buy more. Again, you're defining your risk and how much you're willing to lose. So let's bring it all together. You guys remember this from last time? This was that Apple trade I talked to you about, talking about how I was waiting for a pullback in the trade to that 21 EMA that also lined up with that previous support and resistance. After an uptrend, pullback for continuation, sold a little bit here once it hit those highs again, sold more at that key psychological resistance level, 155, though I did not get the top and that's okay. What does this look like? Same thing, my friends. Same thing. Remember that one, two, three, four. Let's talk about this. The Apple bull flag setup. Here's your bull, here's your pole, here's your flag. It goes up, comes back down. It goes up, it comes back down. But this time, it doesn't come to the bottom of the flag. It goes to the 21 EMA, which is where I was looking to enter it. Right, I want it to go to the 21 EMA. It's where I'm looking at her. That's my buy zone. So I've identified the setup here. I've identified the buy zone here. For me, it was the 21 EMA, this blue line. That was my buy zone. I was waiting. I was patient. I wanted it to come back down. Did I want to get it here? Yes. I didn't want this thing to run away from me. Was I feeling the FOMO? Like, I want to trade it. I want it. Yes, I did, but it did not offer a good risk reward right there. For me, not what I wanted, no, no, no. So I waited, was patient, and identified right away where are my profit targets. Well, I wanna sell a little bit when it gets back up there because what could happen? It could reject it and come back down and I want to pay myself, all right? If the market makes money available to me, I wanna say, I thank you very much and take a little bit of money off the table, okay? But I identify my profit target here. I also wanna take some off here, that key psychological level. Scale out a little bit here, scale out a little bit here. Here, that's number three that says two, my bad, should be three profit targets. And number four, what is my stop? My stop is back below this key support and resistance level. My stop is back below where I entered. Could I have made my stop back below here on the, sure I could have. I could have if I wanted to. That's why it's your plan. You can make your stop wherever you want to. You might determine you need to give your trading plan a little bit more breathing room on that stop. That's okay. That's you. Trade according to your own risk uh, profile, right? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scale out a little bit here. I'm gonna scale out a little bit here. And if it breaks below here, I'm out. That's my trading plan based on this setup. Bull flag, buy zone at the 21, profit at uh, 
you know, the same highs, profit at key resistance at 155 psychological level, stop back below where I entered and back at the bottom of the flag. Now, in order to execute that plan, you need to understand order types, right? Because you're like, in order to get in the plan and to get out of the plan, the setup, you need to know the order types that will get you there. Because what you don't wanna do, which we talked about last time, is watch all day long. This gets real old, real quick. You need order types. Order types that help you execute a trade. If we're hunting, think about these as like traps. Order types is like traps. You just stand there over the trap, you set the trap, and then you go back and you check the trap. All right, that's what these order types are. So here's the three types I wanna to talk to you about. Number one's a market order. I told you, you're like, Sturge, come on, we just got done with plans. I'm drinking through a fire hose right here. That's all right, this is recorded. You can go back and re-listen to it, re-watch it. Three order types you need to know about. There are market orders. You place a market order, I don't use a lot of these, and it buys or sells at whatever the current market price is. There's a bid and there's an ask, right? Just like an auction. Auctioneer says, hey, give me 10, give me 10, give me 10, give me 20, give me 20, give me 20, give me 20. And we have an, a bid from bidders that say, yep, I'll give you 10, yep, give me 20, yep, right? There's a bid and the ask. When you do a market order, say I buy it at whatever the ask is. Right, if, the, if, the, if that's like saying, hey, I'll give it for 20, and you're like, yep, I'll take it. That's a market order, right? You're buying it whatever is being asked, right away, filled, okay. Then there's a limit order. This buys or sells at whatever limit price you set. So on Apple, if you're like, I wanna buy it on a pullback to 40, 140, you set the buy at 140, and it will fill it once it gets back to 140 or better. That is a limit order. And then there is a stop order. The stop order combines the first two. It will initiate a market order to buy or sell if the price breaks a level. So if the price pulls back to 140, it will initiate a market order. Right away it will buy or sell at the market, at the ask, once the price hits that level, all right? So those are the three types. Market order, buys it at whatever it's going for. Limit, buys it at the price or sells at the price you set. And stop is it buys it at the market when it hits the price you set. All right. Chess says, I've been trapping the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this. This is what this would look like with the setup I just talked to you about. So here is the flagpole. I wanna set a limit order to buy when it pulls back to the 21. Notice this tiny little wick right here, it just wicked it, boop, just wicked it, boop. That's why you want that sitting there, waiting to get picked up, all right? That is the limit order. And then once the limit order happens, I want another limit order waiting to get ticked out once it gets back up here above 150. Limit order to sell, waiting again this was a limit order to buy limit order to sell waiting all right and then another limit order to sell waiting i've already got it in there i could be doing other things i could be gardening i could be macramaying a blanket all right <laughs> whatever you do right where you don't want to stare at screens all day you have these things waiting or Let's say it breaks it. With this one, it didn't, but let's say it broke it here for your stop or here. You can put in a stop loss order, meaning it sells, once it hits that price, it sells it at market. I don't often use these. I usually just create, a, uh, create an alert to tell me it has broken that. But if you want to protect yourself, really protect yourself from like a flush in the market, Stop loss is the best way to go about it, all right? I don't oftentimes do that, but that is a great order to use if you wanna say, hey, I, I do not wanna risk losing any more than I have to here, right? I'm gonna put a stop loss right there, a stop loss order or a limit order to sell on the way down. Once you create your plan, here's what you gotta do. 
You must honor your plan. You got to honor it. And let me tell you, I am not the best at this. Why? Because I'm a human, just like you're a human. All right. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I always honor my plan. But what I aspire to be is rigid in my rules and flexible in my expectations of what will happen in the market. I have rules. I got a plan. I want to stick to that plan. I want to be rigid in those rules and with that plan. Stick to it, but flexible in the expectation. Because as I said before, we know that anything can happen in the market. Again, remember, when money is on the line, your brain will short circuit. I think it was Mike Tyson who said, everybody's got a plan to get punched in the nose. It's great to say what you're about to do in the fight. It's different when someone hits you in the face. All right, I know, that's happened. I have brothers, okay? So plans help you avoid making emotional mistakes, which is why we make the plan before we get in the trade, all right? The trade is setting up, the pattern's setting up. You're like, I see it, I'm gonna make the plan. Is it gonna get to my buy zone? Okay, I'm gonna buy it. I know my target, I know my stop loss. Here we go. What can happen? Anything. What are my rules? This is what they are. I know my plan. I'm gonna plan my trade, I'm gonna trade my plan. That's what we're doing. Now, there are common emotional mistakes that we all make. I'm gonna say it again. We all make them. So if you've already made them, then that's okay. You're in the same boat as the rest of the human race. Don't be hard on yourself. Just recognize it. Here's a common emotional mistake we all experience in trading. You know it. I know it. That pesky FOMO. The fear of missing out. We want to be in, baby. We want to ride that setup to profit town. And when it runs without us, we say, no, come back, don't leave. And so what do we do? What's our common mistake? We chase. Oh, right? And how do we know? We'll say to ourselves, uh-uh, you ain't getting away from me. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna come after you, right? What do I mean by that? Price, price is running away and we're chasing it. And so we buy it outside of our buy zone. Don't do it, friends. Don't do it. It will hurt you. And even when it works, it's gonna set up a bad habit that will ultimately hurt you. Michael Scott said it best. You know it, I know it. I hate, 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 hate being left out. I hate it. No one likes being left out. We probably all have those scars, don't we? I remember being in junior high, wasn't that cool, pretty gangly, couldn't get a girlfriend, right? For, this was before cell phones. I would like wait by my phone at home, like who's gonna call me? Is there something happening tonight? Is some people hanging out? I wanna be included. Why aren't I included? Oh, that's right, because I'm a nerd. Well, no one likes being left out. No one likes not being included, especially in a trade that's working. And if you see this breakout here, if you're like, I didn't buy it here, I didn't buy it here, I didn't buy it here, oh, now it's running, and you're buying it up here, friend, you're probably chasing it. And here's the thing. We all like movies, don't we? I love movies. You know why movies are fun? Because they imitate life that ought to be, but really isn't, okay? Rarely works out that way. Right? And anyone that's ever been in a relationship where they are doing all the work and the other person's not that interested, it sucks. It's no fun. And you're chasing them, right? Relationships need to be 50-50. If it's like 90-10, it's terrible. I've been there, right? For my wife, it's probably most of my relationships, honestly. But that's okay, right? This isn't a movie. The movie, it's wonderful. It all works out, right? She's running, you chase her. She realizes that she really loved you after all, right? Uh, like Forrest Gump, who's always going after Ginny, and Ginny ultimately came back, and had a kid, and they got married, 
right? Wasn't that lovely? Friends, this is not the movies. This is not. Movies aren't real life. It's a story you like because isn't that nice? No, no, no. No, Jenny moved on, friends. All right? And so do you. Let her go. There are other fish in the sea. Meanings that there's other opportunities out there. And every time you chase and you get a bad buy, you are missing another opportunity that is setting up right at that moment. So friends, let her go. Let her be. She's gone. She's up there. She's gone. Let her go. Find somebody else. Find another trade. Look for another opportunity. Don't be Michael Scott, right? Don't do that. Don't chase. Other common emotional mistakes. Fear of being wrong. Nobody likes to be wrong. I don't like being wrong. You don't like being wrong. If you're in trading, get used to being wrong. That's okay. And you know what? No one knows what's going to happen next. So you're not technically wrong. All right? That's the common misconception. You would be wrong if you were a fortune teller and you predicted the future inaccurately. But you're not. You're a trader. You take high probability patterns. If it doesn't work out, it just doesn't work out. But this common mistake that we make is hodling. Who knows what hodling is? Ah, hold on for dear life. Don't do it. Don't hodl. We know what this looks like when we make these statements to ourselves, right? It's running away from us. It's going too long. It's going long. This happens in both directions. Holding, holding on for dear life happens in both directions. That's why you set a profit target. That's why you set a stop loss, right? If you're being greedy and you're like, oh, just a little more. Oh, I just want a little more. Just a little bit more. Mm -mm. Don't hold on. Don't hold on for dear life. Or it drops way below your stop loss. And you're like, you're hoping like, it'll come back. It'll come back. Yeah, yeah, it will. It'll come back. Probably won't. She's gone. Just get out. Just get out. If she comes back, you can buy again. Just get out. It's okay. Right? But don't worry about being wrong. Don't play the hope card. Right? Hope is not a strategy. And here's the thing. If you're a hopeful person in life, that's great. Right? We'd probably get along. I'm pretty hopeful. I see the best in people. I rely on my wife to tell me, like, no, don't trust that dude. Like, oh, really? Oh, Okay. Right? I'm a hopeful person. Doesn't work in trading, which is why the markets aren't set up for you because people want to be hopeful. They want to believe she'll come back. They want to believe in the story. That's why we like movies. Market doesn't work that way. You got to work that out of your head. You got to let that go. All right? That doesn't work in trading. So we don't worry about being wrong. We set a plan and we stick to it. And we do not hold on for dear life. Friends, this is what this looks like. If it's, if the price moved down here, down here, and it's broken the flag, right? Not selling is you just being afraid of being wrong. That's it, that's fear. I don't wanna be wrong, I don't lose money. And once I sell, I'm already out that money. If it comes back, maybe I'll get some. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Mm -mm. And not selling up here is just being greedy. Set your profit targets, set them. Pay yourself. That's okay. Never go broke paying yourself. Pay yourself. Key is that this also is not a movie. Don't be a hero. I love Braveheart. I am William Wallace. And I see before me a whole army of my countrymen here in defiance of tyranny. You've come to fight us free men and free men you are. Doesn't that inspire you? Doesn't that get you pumped? I get pumped. I get goosebumps. Woo! I get pumped. I want to fight to be free. Awesome. Right? But that's not what trading is about. Don't be a hero. Pay yourself. Pay yourself when you can or let it go. Look at William Wallace. Look at this movie. These things condition us to believe in hope. This is a cavalry charging men on foot and William's got this great idea. I'm gonna hold up these sticks and they're gonna run right in the sticks and that's it. It sounds great. Did it work? I don't know, but it makes a great movie.
doesn't it? You enjoy it. You're like, oh my gosh, they won. I can't believe it. They won. No, rarely, rarely, rarely. Don't do it. Don't be a hero. Don't stand there. Hold, hold as these horses charge you with equally long sticks and swords and experience, right? You know when it's dangerous. Just say, no, mm -mm. I'm out. And then you can always get back in, right? I mean, I hate to say it, but if people, you know, left and then they rejoin the army later, they're not going to say no. Okay, that's terrible. But it's true. Don't be a hero, right? Just get out or pay yourself. Now, how to know when to sell. Oh, gosh. How to know when to sell. In our trading room, the workshop, it's the question I get the most. Are you still in? And that question is always asking the same thing, right? Should I still be in? Are you still in? Therefore, should I still be in? And that's okay. That's what the trading room is for. That's where we're learning. But the answer to that question for yourself, remember that note I told you to put on your screen last time? What's my reason to get into this trade? Is the reason for taking the trade still valid? For the setup, it's a bull flag. Is it still in the flag? Still valid. If it's not, not valid. Sell. All right? If it's a 1330 crossover and the 13 moving average has moved above the 30 and it crosses back below, is it still valid? No. Get out. So that's the question you got to ask yourself. Is the reason I took this trade still valid? If it's not, get out. That's how you answer that question. Here is another emotional mistake, and this is huge. So you need to listen because this gets us all. It's the last thing I'm going to go to. Don't jump from one setup to the next. In trading, if we're losing or something's not working, we're like, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try this. If I shot one of every single type of shots in basketball, how good would I be? No, right? I think it was Bruce Lee who said, I do not fear the man who has made 10,000 kicks, but who has made one kick 10,000 times. Repetition. Setups are about probabilities. Setups have a higher probability of working than not working. But what does this require? Multiple trades, a data set. If I flipped a coin, what is the probability it's gonna land on heads? 50%, right? But that 50% is gonna average out over the number of times I flip it. It could land on heads five times in a row. But if I have enough flips, ultimately it will average out to 50-50. Same thing happens with the setup, right? You need enough data, enough trial and error to see if it works and if it works for you and your personality and trading disposition. You need to try multiple times. So don't make the mistake a lot of young traders go, bounce, 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 this idea, that idea. Oh, I want some of this, I want some of that. Oh, maybe that, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try that. No, 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 don't do that. And the reason we do it is because we don't wanna be wrong. And this is how most people feel. I love this movie. I don't want to be a loser. None of us want to be losers. It's why we're so quick to hope and to try something different. We don't want to feel like that. And it's completely understandable, which is why we bounce from thing to thing to thing. This is me trying to set your proper expectations as a trader. You don't want to be losers. And so we... We're, oh, we run after what we think is the, you know, the golden goose every single time. I see so many traders do, I'm gonna do this, uh, I'm gonna do that. Right? Nothing works all the time, nothing. But they simply have higher probabilities of working in different market environments. My putter is not gonna work great off the tee box, right? My driver is, that's the best setup I've got to drive a ball off the tee box. It's not always gonna go straight, but it's got a better probability of going straighter and longer using a driver than a putter. You just gotta know what setups you wanna use and when. We're gonna talk about that more. So here's how you need to think about it. 
On the right is oftentimes how we feel. Trade doesn't work out, setup doesn't work out, and we're punishing ourselves, and we're banging our head against this. I've done this, let me tell you. I have been so mad at myself in the past because I want to win, and I'm hard on myself. You got to think about it like the kid on the left. He's got a flat tire. If you've ever had a flat tire on your bike, do you ever look at yourself and say, I'm worthless, I'm a loser, I'm so stupid? No. No. No, you don't do that. What happened? Right? The tube inside your tire popped or leaked or whatever. You're not a loser. Just got a bad tire. What do you do? Get a new one. If you stick to your plan and the plan's not working, then it's not you that is bad. Your setup or plan is bad. So you fix it and you try again. You fix it and you try again. But this is very important. Too many folks have cut their trading careers short because they simply give up and say, I guess I'm not a trader. Now, if you make emotional mistakes because you don't stick to your plan, that is a different thing. But if you have a plan and it doesn't work, well, then it's the plan that doesn't work. If you're learning to ride a bike and the bike tire pops or goes flat, it's not your fault in riding a bike. It's just a bad tire. Get a new one. Get it fixed. Try again. So let's recap. <clears throat> First and foremost, knowledge about trading. Markets often move in repeated patterns. Bullish patterns often lead higher. Bearish patterns often lead lower. Here's important to remember. We're going to come back to this. Why does this work? Because patterns reflect traders' psychology. And because humans are humans, it oftentimes repeats. I hope that makes sense. A pattern in the chart is simply a reflection of traders' psychology, the market participants, right? A market, a, a stock goes up or down because you have more buyers or more sellers. Those are the market participants. And the psychology is, oh, I really like it here, I wanna buy it. Or I really don't like it here, I wanna sell it. That's the psychology of it. And because these patterns reflect the psychology of those participating, it oftentimes reflects because humans are very much the same which is why they have higher probabilities than others, which is why they oftentimes repeat. Markets move in patterns because of the participants of them, the ones who are trading them. Watch for these patterns. Number two, the how. Create your trading plan. Use these four basic elements. What setup are you using? Here's a basic setup. Buy at the 200 simple moving average. Comes back to the 200 still moving average, buy it. What's your buy zone? The 200. What's your stop loss? Below the 200. A close, maybe two closes below the 200. What's your profit target? I don't know. Whatever you want it to be. Maybe a key resistance level, right? Maybe when it, if it breaks the eight EMA, right? You gotta set that. But you could have as simple as a setup is buy the 200 SMA. That's it. Doesn't that gotta be crazy? But create a trading plan. By all means, know and use your different type of orders. Order type, market order, limit order, stop loss order, right? Or, you know, you can do that on the upside too. I like limits on the upside as well. And then finally, with this, you must trade your plan and plan your trade. Plan your trade, trade your plan, write it down, put it on a sticky on your monitor, wherever you're trading. Do it. Do it now. Finally, common emotional mistakes. The fear of missing out leads us to chasing rather than being patient and waiting for our buy zone or looking for better opportunities. The fear of being wrong, right? Common mistake leads us to holding on for dear life, maybe on the downside or greed on the upside. And finally, so commonly, we can feel like failures if the trade doesn't work out, which is why I continue to repeat, anything can and will happen. We just trade high probabilities. If it's gonna work 60% of the time, right, then you'll work six out of 10, it'll work six out of 10 times. And if you stick to your trading plan, then ultimately you'll be profitable. Some days not, other days yes, more days than not, yes. If it's got a 60% probability of working. 
But you need to understand, if it doesn't work, it's not you. It's your setup or your plan, so find a new one. Key trading truth. In trading, emotions are not your friend, which is why there has been the emergence of algorithmic computer trading, because they don't have emotions. They just buy and sell according to what you program them to do. So much of the market is run on these things because it cuts out that emotion. You need to be somewhat similar to that, right? Rigid in your rules, flexible in your expectations. Emotions are not your friend, but your plan is, and you need to stick to it. Okay, I'm done. That was an hour, almost to the dot. Let's take some of your questions, friends. Thu said, if you sold the option and rebuy the option, can I change the strike or should it be the same strike? That depends, Thu, if you're changing your plan or not, right? If you, uh, if your plan changes, then I would, uh, then again, each time you set up a plan, you got to determine, is this uh, options contract the best one, the best risk reward for me? Has the open interest changed? Has the volume changed? With the price change, if I've already sold and I get back in, right, um, is there a more strategic advantage for me going uh, more in the money or out of the money? So it, again, just depends on when you reestablish your plan. Oh, I like that, TA. I like that. That's a great analogy. I mean, Robert, you can channel the anger. I have often find, times found it better to simply recognize it and let it go. Recognize it and let it go. All right. That's awesome, Faye. It's huge. We got to know what. We got to know how, but we got to get the psychology right. Oh, Avni, how do you select which option to buy? This is a fantastic question. I have a ton of training series that walk through this. I will answer your question in short. Avni, I look for volume open interest, and depending on the trade setup, I like to generally look for a delta between 50 and 70. That's generally what I look for, all right? But I just did a training yesterday in the workshop on the different ways to go long, and in that, I talk about the different option strategies, and with that, it depends what type of contract I wanna buy. You're very welcome, Robert, I'm glad it was helpful. Ooh, Stephen, that's deep. As a man thinketh, so he is. Absolutely. Because we can have these thoughts and emotions and desires, but as we think, it has to be done out into the world with our, with our bodies. It's the expression of it. That's why I say psychosomatic beings. Ben, these are awesome life lessons as always. Steve, yet, I appreciate you more than you know, man. Enter, uh, entering trades at resistance break. Wait for retracement. Josh... This is a fantastic question. Fantastic question. Josh is asking a fantastic question that I want to address. So let's address it together. Do you, do you take it at the break? Or do you take it back at retracement? Well, let's bring up our Apple chart and ask the question. Okay? And ask the question. Okay. Let's draw it out. Here's the flag. Pull. Right, I would argue here's the flag, right? Like this, the wedge. I took it right here. You know what? That's not helpful. Let's 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 draw it like we did before. He is asking, do you take the retracement or do you take the breakout? And here's what you need to understand, right? Here's what you need to understand. Two sides of the same coin. This Entry right here on the breakout, on the breakout is a different risk profile. All right, it's a different risk profile. Notice you could take, you could have taken that breakout here and went up. Next day, boop, came right back down. So here's my question to you as a trader. Let's assume you entered it right here, and it pulled back all the way to right here. Do you have enough? patience, enough 
chutzpa, pelotas, right? Courage, courage to hold all the way through this pullback. Do you have enough to hold all the way through that pullback? If you say yes, then sure, you can buy it here. But notice entering here with a stop here, right, is a much different and smaller risk reward profile, right? I'm risking much less because if it breaks this, I'm out. And if I got in here at 144 and I'm going to stop out at 142, that's a $2 risk. If you get in here at 150 and it pulls back to 144, right? And, you, and you're going to stay it all the way down to 143, that's a $7 risk. $7, $2. What is your risk profile, right? Are you okay holding through all that? Then maybe it, it is to find to take it on the breakout. I personally like the pullback. I like the retracement buy. Classic Charles Dow, 100 years of that pattern. All right. Yes, Josh, I'm glad it makes sense, man. I'm glad that's helpful. Okay, it's a great question. Steve says, do you got the giant nads? Yeah. And Brian, Robert says, no, I'm out. So know yourself. This is why I keep talking about the psychology. You got to know who you are. If you're that guy or gal that's like, I don't mind sitting through all this. I don't mind. No. Then great. Right? Here's another option. Just so you don't miss the trade, just so you don't miss the trade, you might, you might buy a little bit here and then buy a little bit here and then buy a little bit here. All right? Maybe you do that. And so if you do that, well, then if it drops, well, then this hasn't lost that much. This has lost a little more. This has lost a little more. I have friends that do that. They buy like right here. They'll buy like one contract. And here they'll buy two. And here they'll buy three. All right? That's how they scale in. Maybe that's how you want to do it. For me, my situation, who I am, this right here, this right here is my buy zone. Here's the eight. Here's the 21. When it's between the 8 and 21 EMA, I'm good. When it's above it, I don't, I don't like it as much. When it's way above it, I really don't like it as much. I want to buy a pull because I believe in the pullback to the 8 EMA for a momentum stock. 8 EMA, this 8 EMA is the momentum line. Is it holding momentum? Right? 21 EMA, is it holding trend? Held it. Only one day below it. Back up. Holding trend. Holding trend. It's got to close two days below 21 to break trend. All right. Makes sense. Cool. Another couple questions. Uh, was the workshop lesson recorded? Yes, it was. Absolutely. By all means, if you want to learn, you want to keep learning, come in the workshop. I think you guys saw Dennis Moffat. He's going to be trading in the workshop. That guy is the man. Way more knowledgeable than me. Way more experienced than me. Way better teacher than me. He's going to be in the workshop. We got great moderators. Ethan was in here before. Ethan Harms, that guy's the man, right? Mike Parks is going to be in there. We got great moderators. We got a great community. Check out the workshop. I love it. I love it. Robert says he is came. I don't know what that means. <laughs> All right, one or two more questions, then I got to put my kids to bed. We're reading uh, C.S. Lewis, Silver Chair. We're on the sixth book of the Chronicles of Narnia. All right, calm, ha <laughs> ha. All right, other questions? Other questions for me and then I'm gonna let you go. What about volume at the 21? Yeah, Steven, I mean, that could be it, right? If you see volume at the 21, I love identifying volume in the move, like a vol, but here, was this a volume breakout? You'd think so, and then there's a pullback. Ah. Low volume, low volume, low volume, low volume, boom, run. There's your big volume breakout right there. There's your line, there's your breakout, boom. Uh, Robert asked, do I use E-Trade for my trades? No, I use Thinkorswim by TD Ameritrade. 
Uh, I don't recommend anyone per se use what you like, what you're comfortable with, uh, but, but you're gonna find everything from me in TOS Thinkorswim. Godspeed, God bless. See you, friends. As always, some important reminders. First of all, RagingBull.com and its employees are not licensed investment advisors or registered brokers, and we encourage you to consult those professionals before making any investment decisions. Also, our discussions today are for educational and informational purposes only and should not be relied upon or construed as personalized investment advice tailored to or appropriate for any particular individual investor. Please know that there are no guarantees in investing, and no matter what has been successful for someone in the past, your results may vary. We strive to help educate people on how markets work, but actual investment results will vary widely based on market dynamics, experience, skill, risk mitigation practices, and the amount of funds invested. For more information, please see RagingBull.com disclaimer.